Hey, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to take a look at the else statement and what it means whenever you have an else statement after a loop, whether that's a for loop or a while loop. Um, now this is confusing to a lot of people who are new to Python because it's not as obvious what's going to happen in this situation uh, as it is, uh, say, if you have an if statement. Like, I have a little sample file over here with an if statement. And this is pretty straightforward, and we've seen this, especially if you're coming from other languages, you've seen this stuff before. You have, so in this example, we have num equal to three. If num is less than two, then print this, else print this. And if I run this code, then you can kind of tell what's going to happen. Uh, num is not less than two. Now, um, that's not as obvious in this example. So we have this for loop, and then we have this else. So what is it that could trigger this else statement? Um, whenever I first started Python programming, I thought that it had something to do with um, whether you passed it an empty list or something like that, then the else would execute. But that's not the case. Uh, you see I have a list here that is one, two, three, four, five. Then I have a for loop that loops through all of those items in the list and prints off that item. And then I have an else statement here that just prints whether or not we hit that else statement. Um, so if I run this code, you can see that my for loop did run, so it printed off one, two, three, four, five, all separately, but then it also hit the else statement here. Now that's pretty weird, especially if you compare it to an if else statement, because in an if else statement, it's always one or the other. Either this uh, block of code is going to get executed or this block of code is going to get executed. But here we can see that both got executed. Now to better understand what's going on here, um, one of the uh, Python core developers at PyCon one year was giving a talk, and he said that in situations like this, he really thinks that the else statement uh, should have been named no break. And if you think about it as being called no break, then it makes a lot more sense. So what do I mean by thinking of it as being called no break? Well, if you're familiar with the break statement, um, what it does is whenever you're within a loop, and your code runs into one of those break statements, then it will break out of the loop. Um, so for example, if within this for loop here, if I put if i is equal to uh, three, then break. Now when I do this, and then I run the code, you can see that it printed out one, two, three, but it did not print the code from this else statement. Now the reason it didn't print this code from the else statement is because it hit this break here. So if you think about this as being called no break, then it makes more sense because it's saying if no break was hit, then execute this code. So for example, if I was to put um, a six here instead, now it's not going to hit this break. So if I run this, then you can see it went through uh, all the items in the list. It didn't hit this break statement, so it printed off the else or print it off what was within the else, I mean. So this is also true for while statements here. So I have a, a while loop here. So while i is less than five, print i, and then incrementing i by one every time, and then else print that I hit the else statement. So if I run this code as is, it prints off one, two, three, four, five, um, and then the while no longer meets that condition. And then it also prints the else because there was no break that uh, was executed to break out of this loop. Now I've got this commented out here. If I put this in, uh, then you can see once i equals to 3, it's going to hit this break. And then it shouldn't execute this else. So if I run that code, then you can see it printed 1, 2. Once it got to 3, it broke out and didn't execute anything else. So hopefully now you better understand that control flow whenever you see an else statement after a loop. Uh, now if we want to see this in a practical exam example, so like when would you use something like this? Um, well we have this little sample file here where I have this function called find index. And so with in this function I'm just going to pass in a list to search and then I'm going to have a target. And within the function I'm going to loop through all the indexes and values and if the value uh, within this list equals the target that I'm searching for, then I'm going to break out. And then I'm going to have an else statement here, which you can think of as a no break. If it doesn't hit this break, then I'll return a negative one. 
and then if it gets to the end here then it will return i which will be the index. So now let's take a look at an example of this function. So I have a list here with three names Corey, Rick, and John and then index location I set equal to uh, this function find index. I pass in the list of these three, three names and then I search for the name Rick. And then this little print statement down here just prints out the index uh, that we found running our function. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. Now you can see it says location of target is index 1. So 0, 1, so it found it right there. So let's go ahead and, and kind of walk through this. So we passed in this list and this target and you can see that it went through the loop and as soon as it found uh, the value was equal to the target it broke out and because it broke out it didn't execute this else statement which would have returned negative 1 and since it didn't return negative 1 then it got down here to return i which was the index of 1. Now if I search for something that's not in that list and I run that then you can see it returned negative 1 because it went through uh, this entire list and it never met this conditional of if the value is equal to the target. It never met that because Steve isn't in the list so it never hit this break statement so then it executed this else which you can think of as a no break and it returned a negative one. So that's just one small example of where you would use something like this. Um, but as you keep programming in Python, you're going to find a lot more use cases where this really comes in handy, and it's, uh, it's a good thing to know. So hopefully that cleared up any confusion that you had about the else statement whenever you see it after a loop. Um, but if uh, you have any questions, just ask in the comment section below. Uh, be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you guys for watching.